meeting of February 27th to order. It is now six o'clock. We're gonna have Ms. Bruce Ord lead us in the prayer. Lord, we come to you before you tonight with uh, gratitude and thanksgiving, Lord, that uh, we have the opportunity to gather here today to uh, praise you, Lord, and to have the opportunity to do your work, Lord. I just pray that you touch each and every one of our heart, Lord, that uh, we can listen to the guest speakers tonight, Lord, that we can uh, go through the agenda tonight and consider your will, Lord, the will uh, that you have for your people and uh, give us the wisdom to make decisions that are in the best interest of Iberia Parish. Lord, I lift up not only our local governments, but our state and our national governments to uh, do what's right for our country, Lord. Uh, Lord, also uh, lift up our military, Lord. Keep those that are on deployment and those that are home safe. and um, Give them a special blessing for the sacrifice they make for our country. Uh, we ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Mr. Brown, lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Tommy Pollard. Here. Yeah. Michael Landry. Tommy Landry. Here. Yeah. Lloyd Brown. Yeah. Warren Goshesang. Here. Yeah. Natalie Broussard. Here. Yeah. Paul Landry. Here. Yeah. Ricky Gosselin. Joe Duga. Here. Yeah. Eugene Olivier. Here. Yeah. Brian Napier. Here. Yeah. Berwick Francis. Here. Yeah. Marty Traha. Here. Yeah. Chad Machra. Yeah. Okay, we have a quorum. Mr. Ricky Gonsolin said that he was in Washington and um, he hated to miss the meeting, but uh, he'll be here with a lot of information for us. Okay, we need a motion and a second to go into public comments. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Pollard. Roll call. Tommy. Brian. Okay, that motion passes. We're now in public comments. Item number one, comments from the general public on non-agenda items. First, we have a Miss Wanda Milliman to address the council on behalf of Wear Red for Ed and a related rally to be held on March 25th, 2019. Thank you. Just introduce yourself, ma'am. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As president of the Iberia Association of Educators, my name is Wanda Milliman, a professional teacher. I am inviting all of you and everyone watching to our Go Red for Ed Walk in the Park on March 25th from 3.30 to 5 p.m. We have a march, a preliminary march on March 16th before the Festival of Oaks as well. Oops, sorry. Politics are in our education system. They are robbing our children, our students, our future. I have had my head in the sand for 15 of my 18 years teaching. In the beginning, I would lose sleep wondering if someone was going to take my job away. It was the greatest thing to have to go to work, but never work a day. I never dreamed that teaching would be so rewarding. But every year, my job gets harder and harder. There's more paperwork, more stress. There's a growing contempt and distrust for teachers. And now there is an exponential decay of true lifelong learners, of true teachers. Students are losing. Our children have less today than what they had 10 years ago. Our community has less. Why? Because politicians are robbing our public education system. Jindal stopped the 2.75 annual percentage increase to our MFP funds. That was a yearly increase in funds. Today, we would have 30% more for every student this year if that robbery had not occurred. We would have teachers being competitively paid so our children can keep professionals who know how to teach. The Iberia Parish public school system is the foundation of our community. If we continue to do with less and less, then we will have less and less for our children. So as a caring member of Iberia, I am raising that flag. It is time to stop and tell political powers to start voting for public education. It is time to start funding, fully funding public education. We want every neighborhood public school to be the best for our children and our children's children. So wear red, Ed, with, wear red for Ed with me. Let us get political notice and stop them from killing our public education system. <clears throat> March 25th, 
3 to 5.30. It is a day that everyone can wear red for Ed and stand up for Louisiana, stand up for Iberia's future, a day we can make better for our education system. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Okay, next B, uh, Evangelist Donovan Davis to address the council to announce a new chapter push coalition second annual conference to be held at the Sliman Theater. Mr. Donovan, introduce yourself. Man, how you doing? I'm Evangelist okay, Community good. Activist Donovan D. Davis. I want to tell everyone in here that I love you all dearly. Thanks for being in attendance. Uh, <clears throat> after seven years of uh, laborious hard work in the community, you know, me myself being a foot soldier at the bottom, um, we are uh, obviously we have a a lot of uh, problems it's a vast assortment and there are always going to be problems in life and uh, <clears throat> the partnership conference that we have between uh, a new chapter push a nonprofit organization that i'm a part of that i'm the public relations director for we've collaborated with the iberia christian ministerial federation amen because the problems are so overwhelming and we need um a vast diverse of people who have anointings and are anointed and gifted in a variety of ways in their lives to bring the services that we need uh, primarily to children that are underprivileged uh, in a lot of the western areas and downtown areas. Now it's not specifically to that, but uh, we, we, we have a vast assortment of services that we're gonna bring. And that's why we partner together because it's so, it's so great and it's so diverse. So we have our partnership conference for change that's going to be March the 7th, uh, 2019, uh, at the Sliman Theater, 10 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. at the downtown Sliman. And the purpose is to bring together churches, nonprofits, employers, uh, law enforcement, local government, and other uh, community groups and organizations in an effort to develop a comprehensive plan to access available resources to connect citizens to those resources and to evaluate the gaps in community resources with the plan to fill those gaps, amen. So like I've, uh, I'm gonna reiterate, the problems are vast. So we need people from all walks of life that are gifted in a variety of ways to bring the services that we need in the community, mainly to mitigate gun violence. You know, uh, since Wednesday night, since Shays Hope had the teen dating violence, it's been uh, a hot streak of violence uh, mainly in the area where I live at, District 3 and 2, okay? And I have a little little brother who is like one of the up-and-coming young thugs on the streets that's coming up right now. I got problems in my household dealing with him. And so I have to deal with things inside the building and outside and even in my personal life. So these things are overwhelming, man, and we need people to uh, to help us, help partner with us for change. And that's what, that's what the Partnership Conference is about. Amen. That'll be March the 7th, 2019, Partner for Change Conference, uh, 10 o'clock a.m., 1 o'clock p.m. at the Sliman Theater. Thank you. Thank you, Amen. Mr. Donald. All right. Okay, next up, item number two, comments from the general public on agenda items. A person's being considered for appointment to the parish board's commissions to address the council. Uh, first up, we have Mr. Joseph Olivier that's applying for the airport Authority Board. Mr. Uh, Joseph, if you could just go to the podium. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, again, thanks for allowing me to address the, uh, the council this evening. Uh, my name is Joseph A. Olivier. And uh, I've been a, always a citizen of Iberia Parish my entire life and currently married to my lovely wife, Gwen Olivier, and have three beautiful kids and one granddaughter. Uh, currently, I'm employed by the United States Department of Labor, the Mine Safety and Health Administration. And our agency regulates the mining industry to ensure that our miners go home safe and sound every single day. That's our mission. Uh, I was always heavily involved in mine rescue work. I traveled all over the country to conduct recovery operations as well as rescue operations. Just recently, I was inducted into the National Mine Rescue Hall of Fame and uh, currently still active. I'm the uh, 
coordinator for the uh, Southern Regional Mine Rescue Association, which is right here in New Iberia, Louisiana. It consists of uh, all the underground mines in Louisiana and, and Texas as well. I'm the uh, coordinator of that event, which we host a uh, regional contest right here at the Sugar Arena annually. So I would invite you guys to attend if you can. And this is typically the first week in May. And this effort keeps our minds in uh, tip-top form in the event we do have an emergency. I, uh, I'm also the, uh, the Grand Knight of St. Peter Claver for St. Nicholas Catholic Church. I uh, also a member of the Holy Name Society, and uh, I was currently a member of the uh, District 4 Water Board. So I'm here today to, uh, to uh, ask you guys to uh, support me. I would, uh, I would love to serve on the board of the uh, airport commission. I think I'm qualified, and I know that the uh, airport has a lot that is, that is going on, and uh, a lot of things are happening, and I would love to be part of that. I've always been active in the, uh, in the community, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to serving on the board. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Michael Lamprez. He's also applying for the Parish Airport Authority. Mr. Lamprez. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Lamprez, uh, and I'm here to ask for your consideration uh, for the appointment, for my appointment to the Iberia Parish uh, Airport Authority. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I've been a licensed pilot since 1992. Um, and I actually learned uh, right out here at the uh, Caden Regional Airport uh, by the late, great uh, Miss Cheryl Gonsolin. Not sure if, uh, and I actually, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, Miss Cheryl also served on the commission at one time. Um, if you never had a chance to fly uh, with Miss Cheryl, uh, she was a fabulous pilot, really a great instructor. Um, I hold a, a bachelor's degree uh, in aviation uh, from the University of Louisiana Monroe. Uh, I also hold a bachelor of business uh, administration I've been born and raised here. Uh, I've got two kids, uh, married to uh, Lauren Lamprez. Uh, ironically, most people know my wife. They don't know. <laughs> She's not from here. Um, but um, I also have uh, been a licensed real estate agent for the past 10 years. Um, and I think it's that experience that is really um, going to be useful. Uh, the, the board, I mean, the uh, airport commission, uh, the airport has about 1,200 acres of undeveloped land that really needs to be uh, put in its highest and best use. And um, it's full of forward thinking. The board is full of forward thinking people, and I'd really like to be a part of that. I think with my experience, I could really help those guys move the, the airport forward. All right. Any questions? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Well, right. Thank you for your time. Um, at this time, I'll also come out and let us know. That was on uh, summary number 21. We'll be voting on the airport. There was a Mr. Corey Fruge, and Mr. Corey has uh, had to pull off his uh, application uh, due to some business that has come up. But he is going to keep it on file for future times, and uh, uh, Mr. Pat's here, so he can confirm that. So uh, now I need a motion and a second. Oh, yeah, okay. I am almost forgot about Mr. Craig Romero. Um, Craig, I believe you wanted to get up and do a little speak. That's too far. Yeah, thank, thank you, Paul. I wanted to come up and just give you all an update since the time we came here in November. I came with Danny David and uh, Roy Pontif, and we talked about the building, the old dynamic building at the airport. And if you will, I'm going to run through some slides and show you all the progress that we've made since that time back in November. Uh, it's for informational purposes because there's a lot out there saying, what are they going to do? The building's old, you know, whatever. Well, I'm just going to show you what we've done. And let the record reflect, this is the second time Craig Romero is in the council chambers not asking for something. <laughs> <laughs> That might be the last time. <laughs> <laughs> it's up there. It might be clicking if I hit the button. It's not on? Oh, I'd like to run through it because I want to run through them pretty quick. I know you have a lengthy agenda. I can do that. It's on? Okay. 
All right, this is just a map of the port. The, well, the building is at the top, right in the middle. There's a dark green area, Dynamic Industries. A lot of you know where it's at. Um, Button's on, but it's not working. Am I supposed to point it somewhere? I just. Uh, oh, okay. All right. This, at the very beginning, we went ahead and after we left in November, we assigned a billing assessment to a local architect, Gerald Gesser, and he came up with a list of things. He went into billing himself from an architectural standpoint and went through any and everything he could find that was in, in disrepair, if you will, and he came up with a list. And in talking to some of the councilmen, I think in talking to Paul, he mentioned to me this, uh, that the sheriff's office had also come up with a list. This is... In the very middle of this picture, track A is the three and a half acres with the billing at the top of it that has been surveyed and delineated into the document for the lease for the purpose of the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement. This is the Sheriff Department's list of everything they looked at in terms of what they thought we needed to do at the building. They added a few things. We had to put a glass security petition when you walk in the front door with a little opening in the middle just for security purposes. In the back hall of the building, we had to put a security door, or we have to install a security door. And then there's a bunch of little things in between. They had some water damage in different areas. This is the building itself. There's 45 offices in this building. And uh, it's, it's, it's 14,000 square feet, as you well know. We talked about it. We broke it into different categories. <coughs> This at the second line, you see Louisiana Port Construction and Development Priority Program. That's the pot of money I told y'all is in Baton Rouge just for ports use. So we're using this money out of Baton Rouge. We have to front the money. Port Commission has to put the money up, and the Port Priority Program approves our plans. We have to submit plans when we develop them and scope of work. They approve it, and within three years, we get 90% of our money back, whatever we spend. Just like on the acquisition, we paid $5.5 million for the whole 100 acres. We applied to the state. They approved it. We're going to get $5 million back within three years, and that land will only cost us a half a million dollars. It's a sweetheart program for ports, and you and I are going to be the beneficiary. The first section is carpentry that we develop a scope, and it lists everything that you could think of. Ex place exterior rotten wood paneling, and I'll have some pictures in just a second. Everything that's wood on the outside of the building, we're taking off and putting hardy board, the cement board, which is permanent. And it's going to be pa it's painted hardy ba board, and we're going to paint over it as well to really make sure the outside is impermeable from weather and the elements because of where we live. Um, and this, if you look at it, you all have a packet. I'd put it on your desk, but it has it by line item. It's pretty extensive. Uh, any and everything that either the sheriff's office or the architect came up with, we're addressing. This is the two quotes we got, two of the three. We asked for three. We only got two. The low ones for carpentry is 21710 from current construction. This is, we, uh, we asked three. Charlie Sanders chose not to bid, but this is the low bid just to show you how much we're putting in the carpentry aspect of the rehab. This is the contract we signed on the 23rd of January. They are out there now doing the work. This is the outside that I just talked about. This is all cedar board. The exterior, there's the only wood portion, but they're all around. They have these little breaks. Everywhere you have a window, you have what you're looking at. This is, we're tearing it off. The bottom's been torn out, and then now this is the hardy board, the cement board, and it's been put, and now we're going to paint all that. Working with the sheriff, the sheriff said, don't worry about paint, we're going to get it painted. So we're putting it all in place, but just to show you. Uh, the second section, this is the big section, electrical. We went in and identified we are changing over 964-foot fluorescent bulbs. Every bulb in that building is being changed. And if they put a new bulb in and it doesn't work, they're going to change the ballast that the bulbs go in. So it's a complete renovation of the electrical. This is a list of, uh, of everything. We're putting 13 new exterior LED floodlights outside, 16 of them, not 13. And then we're putting two 60-foot poles out in the parking lot with 2,000-foot watt LED floods to light the whole port, to light it up, because you want as much visibility as you can being in the remote area of the port. Uh, a lot of incidental things, but you can see there's a lot of detail that we're going after. Uh, the bid for the electrical, Dixie Electric is the quote, $64,000. There was a three, we asked for three, the other two electrical contractors were busy, they didn't submit a quote. 
Uh, this is the contracts on January 23rd. Dixie Electric is out there doing all that I described. That's on that list in front of you. The third category is plumbing. Um, there was the way that system is set up. There was only one occupant on that whole hundred acres. It was Dynamic Industries, and there was one main four-inch water line feeding the whole property. We had to identify where it's at, cut it off, put a new backflow preventer and redirect and put valves where we can close off the rest of the yard because it has to be a single use tenant in this situation, the sheriff's office. Uh, this is, we had, like I said, established water utility entrance at the building and then we had to put the new backflow preventer and separate that whole big line from the rest of the property. Uh, this is a, just a series of money we've spent uh, just on plumbing alone, 3,100, 1,800, uh, changed faucets. They did pressure tests on all the valves. They changed the 10-gallon hot water heater here. Uh, the $4,000 invoice, another 300. Just as we go along, we didn't know we couldn't develop a scope because we didn't know to what extent we had to go out and do the work. They had to go out there, turn the water on, and then look for leaks if there's any leaks, and change everything that leaks under a pressure test. The next, the last one we have here is the HVAC. There's heating and cooling. There's 11 different heating and cooling units. This is a map of the Building again, there's 11. You see these little boxes? There's 11 throughout the building, heating and cooling units. And what we did, we had gone out for quotes, and we got a variation. We got four quotes the first time about a month ago. We had three quotes, 17, 18, 19,000. We had one quote for 7,000. Now, you know yourself, you, that one quote in 7,000 was not going to do what was being done. So we looked at the scope of work, and it wasn't definitive enough. So we brought in a mechanical engineer to come in and hook up to every one of the units and they individually test. This is a copy of their paperwork. I'm going to just fly through that. But unit one, they have a description of what they did to test that unit. Everything, the motor, the thermostat. And on all 11 units, they're re recommending we change thermostats to have brand new thermostats. And there's a lot of component parts. Uh, most of them were low on refrigerant, but they independently tested each one. And you have, I think, one unit's recommended. And then this is an individual sheet on each unit with the detailed explanation of what the finding was. So we have that in the records if we have any problems going forward. But now we have a set of specs. Tomorrow morning we're receiving the quotes again from probably the same contractors now that we've better defined exactly what they have to do. Again, I'm just scaling through these 11. Oh, I missed the best picture out of it. And there's only one slide I need to show you, love. but in total, the original estimate was 145000 for all the improvements to the building, according to Gerald Gesser's original estimate. And the only thing missing out of this is the limestone. What we've done is included the limestone in a bigger project right in back of that building, going through Port Priority. It'll be in the neighborhood of thirty to $40,000 worth of limestone to do the entire parking area that they want. Uh, as you can see, we even got a little sign in the front we did on a computer, a computer-generated sign. I'll be right back sheriff's office. Y'all didn't see that. We just did that late this afternoon. But this is the building minus the two big trees on the front. We eliminated them because they were growing into the building. Um, but it's, we've spent that much money. That's where we're at with it. I just wanted to come for informational purposes. We've been back okay. and forth with Andy about the details of what we're going to do. And I think as of Friday, I was talking to Andy before the meeting, I think Ray Allen, our port attorney, has sent a response back to Andy simply saying, look, if y'all want to budget something for budgetary purposes with a dollar limit on operation and maintenance, this is a cooperative endeavor agreement. This mm -hmm. is not a lease between the paying tenant and, you know, and it's on an annual basis. So if we get to where uh, an earthquake comes or apocalypse comes and it's worse, <laughs> worse than $7,500, then you can always walk away from the building. You know, we're doing what we can because we have some money, like I told you before, not costing you and I anything. We just creative enough to be able to give y'all an asset that we could probably rent, but I'd rather let y'all use it. Man, y'all never tell us no for anything, you know, when we come here with something that makes sense. We try not to come with anything other than that. But again, this is just an update. Now, if you have any questions at all, I'll be glad to answer. I know y'all voting on it tonight, and they're anxious to get in there, and, but that's y'all decision. Uh, we've gone into a lot of detail. Uh, Mr. Trump. Craig, a hurricane. What would happen if a hurricane would come on the, on the building? How a hurricane come and they get flooded? Who's 
who would be responsible? Well, you'll have flood insurance for the purpose of, uh, and when I came in November, let me back up. I've been talking to Paul. I hadn't talked, I talked to some of y'all intermittently, but when I came, I said, you pay the utilities. We check with Entergy. It's $2,400 a month when, when Unifab was up and running full scale. That billing, the utilities for that billing was average $2,400 a month. And I said, just check with Entergy. Ted Johnson will tell you that's what it is. The only thing I misspoke about, because when I got back, Ray Allen and him said, look, Craig, all of our tenants at least pay the flood insurance premium and the property premium. Property premium is not a whole lot. The flood insurance, we go into a much higher deductible to reduce it. And the total, I think the flood insurance is right at $5,000. And the, the other level of insurance, Paul may remember, I forget what it was, but that's the only difference that you'll pay. So you'll have flood insurance. If a, if a hurricane yeah. comes, uh, you do like we all do. You do as best you can to prepare for it and uh, get out of harm's way. Yeah. Marty, I don't know yeah. where you want to go with the answer. No, no, no. I just, I just, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm we're all in it together. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's our bill. We're going to do what we can to protect the port. Yeah. And it's, it's important to us. We, we want to help y'all because y'all help us. But on top of that, it's not a bad thing for the port to have all these police vehicles going to the port. You know, we don't have a security s service, but you have a little bit more respect for the property out there. Because, the, look, I want to tell you, the last, I've been there four years. In the four years I've been there, when January rolls around, out of the four largest employers at the Port of Iberia, normally one of the four largest employers has a big job for the year. And the other three are scratching their heads trying to find work for the last three years. Right now, the four largest employers at the port have work going into 2020. They have some of the biggest jobs they ever had. Bayou pipe coatings taking in that Keystone Pipeline pipe, 1.8 million feet of pipe. They hire, they even put up a circus tent. If you want to see something, go on Curtis Lane. There is a circus tent that's lit. Came from New York. They had to put a $100,000 deposit down. They didn't have time to build a new building to do that project because it's an emergency project. It'll take two years to strip and coat 1.8 million feet of pipe. Bayou has a tremendous, and that's not the only project they have going on. They have two or three others in that yard. So they have a space problem. Dynamic, they've got the, the things to go to Pennsylvania. They're gonna be up to 450 people in the month of June. That's, that's a high rate of employment. They were just told this week they have a jacket and a platform that they're going to do. They thought Don McDermott was going to get the job. They were told they used their numbers and they're going to get the work. They don't even have enough yard space to do it. They do have a right of first refusal on 35 acres across the road that they may have to exercise to get it. Custom compression, same thing. They've got a project. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. Chart Industries that builds the LNG coal boxes. This week, the news came out, Venture Global was just given the Federal Energy Regulatory Authority approval they, for the Venture Global LNG project, one in Plaquemine and one in Cameron Parish. Both of those coal box trains will be built at the Port of Iberia. They have 30 employees right now. Within 60 days, they're going to be up to 350 in that one yard. You know, so it's bang, bang. You yeah. know, now they're fighting over employees. And they're going to bring a lot of employees in, but it's going to help because our yeah. local people are going to have a better job opportunity because they're going to have to compete price-wise to get those employees. Well, thank you, Ms. Craig. We'll be voting Craig, on that in wait, summary number 16. I, I want the we, we're going to hold up on that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a motion and a second to go into back into regular session. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a uh, second by Mr. Napier. Roll call. It's not marking. Yeah, wait. Okay, roll call. Joel, Tommy. Okay, we're now back in regular session. Uh, reports, finance, and administration action, we have none. Reports, parish, and governmental agencies, we have none. Public works reports, number one, public works department report for closed work orders dated February 4th to 8th and 11th to 15th, 2019. Public works Department report for open work orders dated February 19th. All that was in your packet. We're going to go ahead and skip special business, and we're going to take care of that when we get to summary number 27 and 8. We'll do it there. So at this time, we'll go on to council member announcements. Do any of the council members have any announcements? All right. Mr. Olivier, you up? I'd like to give a brief report on the uh, 95th Annual Conference of Police Road Association of Louisiana, which was on the 13th of this month. Uh, basically, that after Wednesday the 13th was spent on registration and meeting of the uh, council of personnel from around the state, and also meeting with vendors, uh, with the 
uh, expos they had over there showing different equipment and different services provided to go local government. Later that day, we attended an early bird reception uh, where Larry, we helped Larry with his campaign for the Police Gerald Association. He ran for the position of a uh, of, uh, member at large. I'll, I'll speak more about that later. Uh, Thursday morning begins with ethics training. Uh, Paul, Larry, and myself, and uh, Michael, we attended the uh, ethics training uh, over there at the, uh, at the meeting. You was there too, Marty. I'm sorry. You always leaving you out. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and later that later that day, we also attended the uh, the Black Caucus uh, session. Also, uh, Paul I and we all attended that. Uh, Marty. <laughs> Marty wasn't at that one. He attended another meeting at the time. He was more important to attend something else at the time. Uh, we also, uh, later that day, I personally attended the Agriculture Committee meeting, which uh, Commissioner Mike Strain uh, was president of that meeting. He gave us uh, data related to agriculture, the Farm Bill in Congress, spoke about that. Uh, he spoke about uh, uh, information about animal control program, which their office is handling now since the uh, hurricane disasters in the recent years. Also attended a Park and Recreation and Tourism meeting where Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser spoke to us. He informed us about the new ads for tourism in Louisiana. He spoke about the success of the past year with a lot of the programs he represented with his office. And he also mentioned about uh, local government assistance and nonprofit uh, assistance to uh, various uh, events in Louisiana we can tap into. Uh, he also mentioned that there is a grant writer also that uh, the Tourist Commission can use to help you know, with grants you know, for local government as well. It's available through his office. And I did speak with uh, I, I would direct over there about that information, and she has that information now. Uh, I also attended the Health and Human Hospitals meeting with Dr. G, G Secretary of Louisiana Department of Health, reviewed an impact on the Medicaid expansion in Louisiana. She also shared data on how the expansion benefited Louisiana and its citizens, and how it affected our health systems in Louisiana. <laughs> We also reviewed subjects in the opioid epidemic, drug costs, and other factors affecting health care today. We finished Thursday with the resolution committee meeting uh, and the host Paris reception. And on Friday, consisted of a general session, uh, associate luncheon, where Governor uh, John Bell Edwards addressed the conference at that time. And later that day, we attended the Police Yard Association business meeting, where I would like to announce uh, Mr. Larry Richard is now serving as a, as a, as a board, executive board member at the Police Yard Association of Louisiana. Congratulations, Larry. All right. He ran for that position, and uh, he, was, he was chosen. Now, this is the only person in Iberia Parish, of course, representing us on the Police Yard Association, and, and I'm proud that we have a, somebody actually rep representing us now. On that, and I'll be I'll be running next year. <laughs> uh, also, uh, we attended the 2020 host parish reception, and we later that day we we attended a banquet uh, in honor of all the uh, newly elected officials of the Community Art Association. It was a well attended conference. Uh, we had a great time. Uh, it was very informative. A lot of the uh, conferences we we learned a lot of information, valuable information. And uh, I think maybe Paul or Michael or Marty, maybe I might have something to add. Y'all mm -hmm. attended different meetings than I did, so sure. if y'all want to add something. Well, I'm I'm go in order. Uh, Mr. Trahan. Yes. Congratulations, Larry. And I will bring bringing you some resolutions to bring to the deal next will. year. Uh, I attended the ethics uh, training, and then I went to uh, public works. Uh, watershed initiative is being uh, created by the state to study all the watersheds. They broke down the watersheds in the state to eight. We in three and four. Uh, some of the technical team that's that's in there is LSU. Uh, come on, and they're going to be doing models. Uh, Louisiana Tech, Utah State University, New Orleans, uh, UL, uh, they're all going to be on the technical team, but they're going to study the watersheds on how we drain and how they, they drain on us. Uh, I, the next one I did was uh, highways, and the roads became a big issue in all parishes that were there that attended 
our committee meeting. Uh, that they have no money for roads, no money for matching. And I, I think that Larry, by the next year, next convention, it, it's gonna reach another level. Uh, I'm working on something behind the scenes and uh, I will be introducing some legislation to go back to the executive board. And uh, that's it. Thank you all. Okay, next up we have Mr. Michael Landry. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was also there. I went to public work with Marty and also on rural grant programs. Uh, a lot of this is based on the money per capita that we make. And I think water was one of the big things we looked at. We just kind of falling out of the line with that. Uh, also, most of the luncheons and everything, we all attended the, the ethics. And uh, one of the big things we had was the uh, the committee, I mean, the ethics on uh, on uh, 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 sexual harassment. That's a big thing, and all of us going to have to take it. And I think... Uh, the four of us did it because that's a big thing nowadays. And uh, and women and men uh, got to do it. So that's that's more or less everything we've done. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I uh, attended a few of them. And effective today since I went to the sexual harassment one, none of y'all can call me baby anymore. <laughs> Uh, John Kennedy gave a, a, bit, a talk and he said that the infrastructure bill is coming down so he asked us all to get all, as many programs as you have for in infrastructure ready because uh, they're going to be coming with the money and we need to have everything ready to go. Uh, the biggest one I went listen to Toy Taylor talk about the uh, intergovernmental uh, issues. The one I found uh, alarming is they want to go with statewide sales tax collections. So the way that's going to work right now, when Amazon and them deliver to your house and charge you sales tax, it all goes to Baton Rouge. It's redistributed back. The problem I see, it's going to be working off of zip code, not off of by city. One, one parish in North Louisiana has uh, two small towns, and the post office is only on one town. So basically, the sales tax collected on the other town is going to go to the other parish. Uh, I worry about in areas, uh, Chad with Koto and stuff, if anybody has a uh, Bruce Ord and uh, Youngsville address, you know, we could be losing all that sales tax there. So that's it for me. Do we have anyone else? Not seeing anybody, we'll now move on to parish president's announcements. Ms. Richard. Well, as you can tell, we all attend uh, various meetings. And that was something that we started doing back in 2016. And, and actually, it was an idea that came from Natalie. Uh, when we would go to these different uh, conferences, we um, we never ha we don't have a lot of people. So what we do is we break it out and we all go to different uh, meetings. Of course, some of the meetings that Eugene went to, I was in a meeting with, G with Eugene. The same thing with Paul. The only meeting that I did attend that they wasn't at was the Louisiana Police uh, Parish Presidents meeting, uh, which is something that we we do and we discuss issues that's taking place in the par in the, excuse me in the state by all parish presidents. Um, our little abatement program over the last two um, weeks of pickup, we pick up we picked up 65 bags of trash and several tires. We still have an issue in Iberia Parish with people dumping off tires. At this particular time, uh, DEQ, they are not accepting tires. So we're having a little problem with that. On February the 14th, uh, the house across the street here that we purchased, that blue house that used to be there, is no longer there. It's, demo it's demolished now. We did the demolition on that on February the 14th. Uh, public Works, as of Monday of this week, we met at the new Public Works facility, so it's no longer the old Dutch Gosnell building. So as of Monday of this week, we started doing some demolition work there. And the companies, uh, we all got together and we're moving forward with that project. And we hope to uh, try to be in that building, hopefully somewhere, uh, we don't know, somewhere around August. We're actually running a bit back, but hopefully around August, we should be in that building. Uh, pair, um, our public works department over the last week, uh, they cleaned culverts in District 13 and District 10. Uh, debris pickup in District 10, 12, 13, and 14. Uh, drainage work, uh, field drainage work in District 6, 10, and 14. Roadside work in District 8, 12, and 13. We did some patching in District 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, and 14. 
road repairs in District 10, District 13, and District 14, uh, side boom work for uh, uh, field ditches in District 11, and uh, shoulder work in District um, 11 as well. We uh, did receive the uh, fourth quarter payment for royalty funds, which was $227,000. Um, $352.80. It's a bit up from the third quarter, which was 220000 but for the year of 2018, we are down. We projected $1.1 million, and we actually had 916000 just for your information. Uh, we, um, as far as the Robert B. Green building, we're definitely moving forward with that. We received a letter uh, from Mr. Lee from the last meeting that we had, Tommy, um, Lloyd, and Michael. And uh, he gave us a follow-up letter on the things that he needs. Basically, what we're waiting for right now is designs from the architect, uh, but not wow. just designs of the building. We're talking about the foundation, the HVAC, the electrical plan, and those types of things. So we hope to have that from the architect within in the near future so we can go out for bids. And with that said, we have a pretty long meeting, so I'm going to end my Paris president reports there. Okay, thank you. thank you, Mr. Richard. We'll move on to consent agenda items for public hearing. First, we have minutes February 13, 2019. Summary number 16, introduced by Paul G. Landry. A resolution authorizing the parish president to execute <coughs> a cooperative endeavor agreement by and between Iberia Parish Government and the Port of Iberia for the use of the old dynamic office building owned by and located at the Port of Iberia to be utilized as office space for Iberia Parish Sheriff's Department with the parish to provide the option of adding onto its general liability insurance and the payment of utilities for said building and the Port of Iberia to provide flood insurance coverage for said building. I have a motion by Mr. Napier, a second. Yeah, the other one. Oh, that's right. Uh, does anything, anybody want to take anything out of the consent agendas? Mr. Napier? Mr. Chairman, I well, I don't know if you want to read summary 20 or? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> summary number 20, introduced by Recreation and Playground Commission, a resolution of condolences to the family of Miss Ansley Sonny Landry, former maintenance superintendent of the Iberia Parish Recreation and Playground Department, who passed away on January 13, 2019. Is there any of the consent agenda items anyone would like to pull out? Mr. Napier. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I don't know if I need to pull it out, but I just wanted to make a comment statement on 16. Could I do that? Um, or should yeah, we pull, we'll it? pull it out? You want me to pull Okay. Okay. So we're going to pull out uh, summary number 16. Mr. Olivier? No, just one second. Motion. Okay. So we're going to uh, pull out 16. We'll be voting on the minutes of February 13th and summary number 20. Mr. Napier and Ms. Broussard. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Napier, a second by Ms. Broussard. Roll call. Okay, those two motions passed. Now we're back to summary number 16. Have a motion by Ms. Broussard. Ms. Broussard? Uh, I have a second by Mr. Napier. Ms. Broussard? Yeah. Um I know there's been a lot of talk and a lot of meetings and uh, a couple of us met with um, Mr. Hazelwood and, and trying to figure this out. I think I'm going to yield to Mr. Sheely at this point to give us an update on what's the status of the cooperative, cooperative endeavor agreement. I, I think I can walk you through pretty quickly. Uh, <clears throat> they've been going back and forth and there's really only one issue left. <laughs> but I want to just hit the high points so everybody knows what the agreement consists of. Uh, there is no rent to be paid for the use of the port uh, facility. Uh, and of course, the benefit to the port is, as Mr. Romero spoke, to have law enforcement out there. Uh, obviously, that helps on security and other things. Uh, the uh, term of the agreement, it's a, a one-year uh, agreement, uh, but it's renewable for one year uh, at a time. Uh, and it's kind of an automatic renewal unless either party says uh, we don't want to renew it. Um, you do that by giving notice 90 days in advance. Um, <clears throat> the uh, parish obligations will be to uh, pay the utilities, uh, to reimburse the port for the flood insurance, for the uh, uh, 
what I call property and casualty insurance, uh, f flood, uh, uh, not flood, uh, <coughs> water and, and those kind of things. Uh, the parish will uh, add the building to its general liability policy and make the port as a loss, uh, as an additional insured or loss payee, and that that would protect uh, slip and fall and things such as that. Uh, that would be at, at your cost, and uh, uh, so it, it really comes down to repairs and maintenance, as I had initially drafted it based upon the discussions that I had with uh, most of you and what I understood the uh, responsibilities were to be that the uh, parish would take care of the uh, uh, sidewalks and mowing and, and those kind of things. Uh, and, and so it's really the what I call the big maintenance uh, items, the, the walls, the uh, roof, uh, structural defects, air conditioning, heating, uh, and, and those kind of things and so after talking and you have a budgeted amount that you have for this type of uh, matter after adding up all the insurance costs and also the uh, uh, potential uh, utility cost and Mr. Romero is correct uh, those utility payments we have as of about four years ago uh, we can only estimate what they'll be today. <laughs> reasonably satisfied with our estimates of what they are and so it's those big ticket items and uh, so uh, what I had uh, suggested is that uh, as kind of a meeting halfway uh, was that you would be responsible for uh, uh, maintenance and repairs that didn't exceed uh, uh, $500 or $1,000 some number that you felt appropriate with but there'd be a cap uh, on it so uh, and and I, you know, Mr. Romero went to great lengths to talk about uh, the work that had been done to improve the facility and uh, uh, air conditioners and other things. But you have a budgeted amount. You knew what you were uh, willing to do when you went into it. And so uh, that was the suggestion that I had was that uh, you, you cap those uh, uh, repairs and maintenance at uh, $7,500. Uh, it appears from working with Kimberly and and everybody that that would keep you within the budgeted amount that you had and so uh, that was the recommendation I think the ports position is that they would like for us to assume responsible fully assume responsibility for uh, maintenance and upkeep of those major repairs and so that's where we are Sorry. yeah I mean as the finance chair I have uh, lots of concerns with this and I um, appreciate so much the, the offer of the building, but um, we, we have to watch the numbers. And I don't think we can go over the 54000 that we have budgeted now for the building that we're doing. Um, we're estimating what the utilities would be based on utilities that are four years old. Um, you know, we, we know what the insurance is going to cost us this year, but do we know what the insurance is going to cost us next year? I, I think we're getting very, very close um, to some, some, um, some danger zones, especially if, if we were to obligate ourselves to be in charge of all of the maintenance, even with all of the repairs and improvements that's done to it. So I would be very concerned about us moving forward without having some kind of cap of uh, what what we're going to be exposed to. I have a couple of other concerns that are uh, a little bit beyond our budget and uh, coming out of the meetings that, that I'd like everybody to consider. And uh, one of those is that uh, there's some significant costs that are going to be uh, expended uh, to move into this building and do the wiring and get everything set up. Um, and, and this is a temporary fix. I mean, uh, it was said that uh, this is not the ideal situation. This is not um, where, where the Sheriff's Department really needs to be. And so um, with the, the possibility of us having a new sheriff in a year and a half with uh, moving cost and a temporary fix, I, I really think we... Excuse me, sir. I, yeah. I, have, I have the floor. Yeah. Um, I think we need to be um, very, very cautious about um, what 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 we're doing. And I do understand that the moving costs would be uh, on the sheriff's department, but that still comes out of the taxpayers' money. I mean, we're still spending the taxpayers, um, uh, you know, um, 
dollars. So uh, we need to be smart about it. And there's no reason to spend um, moving costs for a temporary fix at, at this point unless we can figure out that this is going to work and is going to be a little bit longer term. So uh, I think we all need to consider this um, very closely. Okay, next up we have Mr. Napier. That throws a wrench in what I was going to say. Uh, well, Craig, I was going to say, and I know this conversation is going to, I want to thank you for, for what you and the board and everybody did to get to this point. Uh, surely Natalie touched on some very critical points, but that doesn't deflect on what y'all ha have done to, to get us to this point. Uh, that has, I think what she's saying has nothing to do with, with the port. I think it was a noble, it is a noble gesture in what y'all doing. And um, I mean, I, I, I support it. I mean, I, I never talked to the sheriff about it. I was thinking they support it. And hopefully whoever the next sheriff is would support it too. I mean, just on the surface, just to me, y'all, it seems like a, it's a big building, it's a it's a, a good build. Of course, Marty, when a hurricane comes, I think we all need to, nobody, nobody's guaranteed that they're not gonna weather flooding or wind damage or something like that. So that shouldn't be, um, I mean, it's a concern, but not that we shouldn't, you know, support it. But surely, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's open for discussion here. But Craig, my, my thing was, I just want, thank the sheriff's department y'all the board and all for getting us to this point and and all that y'all doing to try to uh, i think help us out i, I mean it, i'll yield to you craig if you want to um. again this is not an adversarial thing i joked about this second time i come here i'm not asking for anything we in this together this is our community and if i got a way to deliver to help y'all with something i'm going to come to y'all with it and then the best part about it is I'm taking money out of Baton Rouge to make it happen. Not out of your pocket. It's out of my pocket today, but I'm going to get it back within three years. I mean, this is like magic. <laughs> I, mean, I know Santa Claus is in December, but again, this is probably the last time I don't come out. But I'm always here asking for something or telling you about something at the port. And we got to do it together, whether it's your problem or my problem. If I have a problem, I'm coming here. I don't care if it's the TIF money or the Louisiana CAD deal. I mean, I can go on and on. Y'all always there. So it's only right that we come here because it's, I can take, when I'm finished with this building, I can give it, I can give it to a real estate person and we can probably rent it pretty quick. And based on the value of the building on insured costs, we can get thirty-five dollars to $40,000 a year for the building. Just rent. And they pay the utility. They pay everything we're talking about. So I just thought it a good gesture because I'm not going to stop coming here, but I see an opportunity to help the parish council. I mean, I lived your life. I know what it takes. And royalties are not what it was way back then. But you got to look at every line item in your budget. And I'll call once in a while, give suggestions to, to Larry. Larry, you can shave some money here. He listens to some. He don't listen to others. But that, that's, his, that's his job. That's not mine. All I can do is offer advice. And I just thought this is a good situation. But y'all just let me know. If y'all don't want it, y'all think it's too close to that, and the earth is coming to an end, whatever reason, y'all just tell me because I'm going to rent the building. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and it, it doesn't offend us. I, I was just here trying to help. And it's, 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 a, it's not an adversarial deal. I'm not trying to lease it to y'all. I'm trying to let y'all use it for free. And I'm grabbing money to fix the thing, 100, over $100,000, that you don't have to take out your pocket either. So I'm still trying to find something fault with it, but uh, y'all just give me some guidance. I'm not here to convince y'all. I'm just yeah. telling y'all what we've done and why we did it. So, Natalie, if, you know, you can't sleep at night over this, we don't have the same software. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> All right, Mr. Napier, anything more? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Trahan. Yes, I would like to recognize my time for Mr. Richard Hazelwood, Chief Deputy of the Sheriff's Department. Okay, Mr. Hazelwood. And what is your take on this? This is uh, something that we desperately need. Uh, we started this with uh, President Richard almost two years ago looking for more space, essentially because our, where we store evidence, we're out of room. We have evidence that we got to hold for criminal cases. We have no place to put it. We're stacking it in the halls. It's not a good place to do. So 
So we started looking for bigger spaces. While, yeah, th this is a big building. It's going to answer a lot of my problems. They're desperately needed. We're gonna, Let's, let's go on and what you're going to move there, kind of give them the okay. illustration you gave well, me. What well, we intend to move there into that building, one is our training division, which is by moving it in there gives me more room to store my evidence and where training, training is now. All right. And then we're going to be moving our detectives in there, both adult and juveniles, sex crimes, crime scene, warrants, narcotics. All those divisions will be moving into this one building under one roof. And the, as large as the building is, it still gives us room to grow and to even add more into it as we see we can get into it. So as a, as the Sheriff's Department, we desperately need this space. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Uh, wait, wait. Go ahead, Tom. No, I want to ask Craig a, a question. Yeah. Well, I just want to ask uh, <clears throat> Hazelwood, what, uh, what facilities are, what uh, rent are y'all paying out? I don't right know the number, but I'm talking about the, or how much are you going to save moving What we're going to save, to rent? Right. As know, a, and, they, and is we, there? We pay the rent. No, I'm talking about the places that they're paying now. Okay. Currently, paying the now, only building that we're paying rent on which the parish council reimburses for is the building on Hansel Street. All the other buildings, you know, where the training center and all of that now, that's all at the jail, that's all under the, owned by the parish. So the only rent we're paying now is for the Hansel Street. So. Okay. Okay. Mr. Trump? Craig, on the inside line, and you said they were gonna change the balance. Would that Will we qualify to go on the uh, energy and changing the lighting uh, to LED lighting? Huh? We, we're changing all the bulbs, over 960 okay. bulbs, and if the ballots do not work, they're going to convert, they're going to do the conversion then. That's okay. all included in the bid. Um, and, and, you know, again, the relationship, Natalie, to get back, I mean, I would never in the port, whether I'm there or not, we need each other, and I'm going to need to come in this room and talk to you all about projects going forward. So I'm doing it, falling over myself to, to offer it to you all simply because I know I'm going to be back because, you know, we've got a lot of good things going on, but there's slow times, so, and there's infrastructure improvements we need, so we need each other bad. So I'm, and we're not going to let you all, if something major comes up with the building, you know, we're not going to oh, force you all to do anything. We need y'all. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to bite off the hand that feeds me. I mean, y'all can, y'all have the TIF money, everything. I mean, it all revolves around this building, and we're just a part of it. So, uh, again, I just want to, you know, apologize for a while ago. Just, I'm here to help you, Natalie. And I'm not against you. No, no, I know that. It's not against me. I'm just here with my hat in my hand. If y'all want it, fine. If y'all don't, we'll have, you know, we'll do what we got to do. But I don't have a problem with that because I got money to play with it. So uh, whatever y'all decide is good with us. Trust me. Okay. If y'all don't want it, that's fine with us. Mr. Trojo? I'm finished. That's it? Thank you. Okay, thank next you. up, uh, Mr. Gosher, Sam. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Kim, how, how long do we have left on Hansel to pay? What's the contract was? How long do we have left on the rental? I'm sorry, okay. Mr. Richard? The lease on Hansel Street, we can get out of it with non-appropriation okay. if we give no i have to give them notice okay. ahead of time that the money is not appropriated to continue the lease and we can get out of the lease on non-appropriation okay yeah. all right uh, the new sheriff would take office probably in june correct the new sheriff will take office july 1st july 1st okay so we said that it would be a year by year basis correct um i would like that contractual that we're or the in a government agreement to show that it would revert back to the council each year can we do that in there so that we're, we're able to go through the process of still having the debate is it still worth being there or not instead of it just a, an actual justification for renewal without discussion can you would you be able to do that Andy okay I, I would just suggest that uh, I, I do see the same numbers that Natalie does but I also say at the end of the day when Craig can pull money out of Baton Rouge which we don't get often it's nice to hear that 
that Baton Rouge is making some form of investments or that we're out going to get those investments. Um, Craig, my, my biggest thing is, at the end of the day, uh, this is a no-brainer. We're all in it together. I agree with you completely. And I think this can be a good thing. If all of our entities work this way, this government would run so well if everybody was together in on this and we knew what everybody was doing. So I appreciate that, like Brian said. I mean, this, this is big to be able to come in front of the council and offer some, some form of um, incentive for us to continue to have open discussions about what's going on at the port. Like most of us, we didn't know most of those jobs were opening in the next 90 days. So just little conversation gets us a far ways, and I, I appreciate that from, from my seat to, to the port commission. Uh, so 365 days, I understand there's going to be a cost in moving it. But, I mean, it's worth a shot. I mean, there's some shots that we take are <laughs> way out of here, but I think this is more of a realistic shot that could probably extend the, um, the contractuals between the council and the sheriff and the, the sheriff and, and the, uh, the port. And I, and, I, and I think, Andy, I, I, this is worth a shot. So uh, it, that's where I'm at. If with I it. could, Mr. Gottschalk, you know, inter interject here. You know, we all know that a new sheriff is coming in Correct. July 1st of 2020. Correct. You know, one of the things that Sheriff Ackle and I did the day after the election for his last term, he was had decided then this was going to be his last term. And our entire goal through this term here is to leave the sheriff's office in a better shape than what we found it. Yes, sir. And by doing this, I think the next sheriff will be thankful for us being in that building. And, and I think we have an obligation to provide space, don't we? I mean, so... You know, if the sheriff is on board and, 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 and Craig, I mean, this is this is an obligation that I think is worth trying. So I'll, I'll yield back, Mr. Chairman. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Olivier. Thank you, Paul. I, I knew we had a lot of concerns about the maintenance issue, the building costs of if some kind of catastrophe, catastrophe happened or so forth. But, you know, we have that same exposure in all our public buildings, whether it's the veteran building, the sugar can festival building, library, sugar arena, you know, you name it. That exposure is always going to be there, and we have to deal with it when it happens. And uh, I'm sure the port and his board are willing to work with us, you know, throughout any major event like that that might happen. And like Warren said, I think it's a good deal for, for parish government to go ahead and uh, close this contract, this agreement, and go ahead and move into that building. I think it's a win-win. I think overall uh, our yearly cost is going to be less than what it's costing us now. You know, we still have a little, a little room in there that's $7,500 to, uh, to put in the maintenance if we need to. But uh, like I'm saying, I'm sure Craig will work with us. You know, he bent over backwards for us over there to get this done. So I'm going to support this venture, and we're going to go ahead and uh, hopefully it will pass tonight. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Bruce, all right. Well, I just have um, several responses, I guess. Um, Craig, I, I don't want you to, to – take this as I'm not appreciative of y'all's efforts and I don't recognize uh, you sticking your hat out and saying hey let's work together and we all need each other because uh, there, there's no question that that is the truth and what you're doing is um, very much appreciated and you're saying if there's something major major that goes on in structure or maintenance or anything like that you wouldn't expect us to do it well then let's put it in the contract. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. I mean, we're here and we're put in this position to protect the taxpayers, so these are the type of things that we need to do. And I'm gonna say way too much tonight, I know. My, my mouth is gonna <laughs> run over, but I mean, where, where we are right now is the contract that we have says, or the Sheriff's Department says, they, they're in charge of all the maintenance. That's the problem with the building right now is the maintenance has got unaffordable. So why would we go and enter into the same contract? I mean, we know that we can afford $54,000 a year. Why would we not be smart about this and work on a contract that is within our budget? I don't understand why we wouldn't wouldn't do that. They're saying, Craig's saying that we wouldn't make y'all spend any more money. Then let's put that in the contract. I mean, it, it's very simple. Um, Warren, you know, do we need to get money from Baton Rouge? Absolutely. But I don't believe that I heard anything that says us approving this or not approving this has any bearing on whether or not Craig gets the money. You're getting the money anyway. 
you know mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't matter whether it goes to the sheriff's department or they're doing this and, and they can rent it out I mean yes let's get the money from Baton Rouge I, I love the magic keep doing it you know get as much as you can I, I, the the five million you got for the other property this it is great for our parish the more money we get in you're putting our people to work just doing the repairs I mean it has that domino effect it's fabulous I mean I, I want to keep doing it I, I know that the moving cost is on the sheriff's department. That's a minimal consideration. I was just trying to bring it to everybody's attention that there are a lot of things that we need to think about. If, if the new sheriff comes in, they don't want to be in this building. I mean, what, is there a harm stand for one more year till the new sheriff makes their decision? I, I'm not set yay or nay on that. I, I just think these are all things that we need to consider. And I was just trying to bring those things to y'all's attention. Um, but more importantly than the moving cost and whether or not this is a temporary fix for the sheriff's department or a permanent fix for the sheriff's department is we cannot expose ourselves to an uncapped maintenance fee. So I'd move to amend the, the resolution to add the $7,500 cap per year uh, in the cooperative endeavor agreement as well as a thousand dollars per incident to where it was routine maintenance that the parish was responsible for okay you finish I made a motion and mr. Lloyd okay seconded. I have a couple more speakers okay. and uh, we'll come back to that motion uh, next up mr. Trong like mr. Richard Hazelwood said he has a certain a to store his his evidence his evidences are in the halls. Where they move it to the training center, it's under better lock and key fencing to protect their evidence. And I think that is one of the reasons I'm a supported because he has an obligation as a law enforcement to store his records in a in a safe and you you'll have it behind fence and razor wire. You know, so it's protecting the people, you know, also even for your clients you know if you have clients the evidence is protected and that's the reason i'm a support it okay mr brown no uh, i was second uh, uh, oh okay okay um <clears throat> before i take the motion in the second <clears throat> yeah this has been going on for a while and what happens is we all know we're at that fifty-four thousand for the Hansel Street that's what we have in the budget so as we started going through this you know we came up with the you know the the flood insurance it was about 55 then um craig and larry i think talked to the electrical companies <clears throat> and then and we kept creeping up higher and higher and i think that's what a lot of the alarm uh, i see in, in natalie's uh, voice is that if we got to anything could throw us above the 54. a lot of our budgets are so tight that you know that's where the alarm came in and that's when i think we went to andy and asked him if for that maintenance uh, department part that if we could just put a cap on it you know it kind of throws it back to craig and them and i think what would happen is we could pass that resolution to go to the uh you know to the port building people to ask if this is something y'all could live with but that way our fifty-four thousand would stay we might have a little insurance and electricity go up but since it's on a year-to-year -year basis i think we would uh you know we would be okay um next up we have mr duga yeah thank you uh my question to mr romero is um is that amendment she's proposing is that a deal breaker well let, let me let me evidently uh, in the last few days andy has been talking to ray allen and through all the limit on the 7500 7900 whatever it is uh Ray and I talked about it Friday, and Ray said, Craig, it's not a deal break. He said, we'll just incorporate the limit, but guess what? If they spend that and something, you know, and it's something that, from a simple maintenance standpoint, not a major infrastructure, if there's something go wrong with the billing, it's on us. But if there's something, if, if regular maintenance goes over 7,900, they can, it's an annual deal. They can walk away at any time. You don't have any skin in the game. All you're paying is the utility bill. You, you don't lose the $100,000. I'll spend the $100,000. I got to take time and go get another tenant. So you walk away. If it gets to where, oh no, it is what you're describing, um, and then y'all walk away from it. And you don't have any, you haven't lost anything. You haven't spent $100,000. So I don't, I don't see, 
you don't have any skin in the game except for the rent. Uh, but again, I have, I'm going to improve the billing and rent it. Again, I'm not here to convince y'all, Natalie. If, and I, I said, if you want to put the 7,500 for uh, th theatrics, put it in there. And if it gets to that and you'll say, oh, it's way more than that, we don't want the billing anymore, then guess what? We're still friends. So I certainly understand them wanting to put it in the contract because uh, a handshake, we don't do handshake deals anymore, and that's an unfortunate thing. But, uh, but, but like Mr. Gosher said, I said we, we, we've spent money on worse things than this. Uh, and I think it, it's probably a good deal to move forward uh, because the risk there in the beginning is you, you've demonstrated that you've gone through the building and fixing all the things that need repairs right now. So the Sheriff's Department is going to move into a building ready to go, and they're moving out of a building that's uh, in dire need of repairs right now. So, it, it, and, and being that we got a one-year contract, a new sheriff can come in and say, hey, we're not doing this anymore. And Andy has a contract, Joe. Well, I say Ray Allen sent him something. He told me today, Craig, uh, well, yesterday he said that he just, that's when we had the discussion about, look, the 7,500, let him put it in there. And so Ray inserted it in such a fashion that it says you spend the 7,500 and if you don't like it, then the deal's, you know, you walk away from it. Nobody's binding. You're not going to pay a penalty or anything. i got to come back over here and beg for forgiveness okay. or whatever else I need. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm joking about it, but it's true. I mean, I'm not going to do anything to hurt the parish council. Miss uh, Bruce Allen. Andy, um, can you refer to the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement that was um, proposed by Mr. Arlan in the section that says maintenance and operation and explain what that paragraph means and if we can really walk away if the building needs maintenance without performing the maintenance? Yes. Natalie, we had that conversation, Ray and I did, and we agreed to what I just said. And if we need to incorporate it as per what I just said, and, we and, do it. Does that satisfy That's all I'm asking for. Well, I, I'm, I mean, I'm in agreement is what I'm standing up here telling you. But, but you're saying that if, if something goes wrong with the building, we can walk away. But the agreement says the parish agrees to be responsible for all maintenance and repairs. That's not the latest agreement is my point, Natalie. Well... I'm just asking for the agreement that we authorize to be entered into has the language that says... I am on television telling you to craft it like you said. Now, I think you got enough witnesses. Any of y'all going to testify I, against I, me? And all I'm asking is to, for, for my resolution to be I don't accepted. work by the hour, Natalie. I work by the year. <laughs> I know what you... I'm not going to delve into it that much. I'm telling the lawyer to write it like you just said. I don't have a problem with it. There we go. Take a vote. So, uh, I'm, Andy, uh, I'm, Andy, I'm going to yield to you right now. So, you're able to draft what Miss Broussard's asking. Mr. Allen and I will certainly <laughs> endeavor to write whatever uh, y'all would like. Yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> that, let me just. One of the issues with just being able to walk away is let me just give you this example Let, let's just say in the 10th month that uh, there's a roof problem and it's a $25,000 problem so you in your mind you've committed to 7500 it's $25,000 and look I, I believe Craig would come back and say okay how, how do we how do we try to together take care of this but if you just walked off you're in the 10th month of a lease. you got to go find somewhere else for, for the sheriff to go. I, <clears throat> I, that's why I just want to be careful about, you know, uh, how you go about doing this. I, I think that this is two bodies that are trying to work together <laughs> to find something that's comfortable, and uh, you want to stay within your budget. Mr. Romero wants you there. Uh, surely we can try to find something in that uh, area, you know. Uh, uh, I, again, the only problem is if, if you just say my remedy is to walk away, you walk away, yeah, you walk away, but you got to find somewhere else to, right. to, to put the sheriff. 
in, in the meantime in the interim. Uh, well, we're using the term walk away as though you got to get out the building tomorrow. Yeah. If you got a roof leak and something gives in, as the example that he pointed to, then you do what you have to do and you take whatever time. We're not going to evict you. <laughs> I can't make it, can't say it enough. I'm your friend. Ms. <laughs> Bruce Orton? I'm done. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Napier. I feel like Santa Claus is coming down the chimney and we just lit the fire uh, to send him back up. I, I am surely missing something here. Um, we pay no rent, right? That's right. We were paying 54000 A year. Still are. Still are. We saying that we, if, if we have maintenance, but from what you're doing, I mean, I haven't seen the building in a while. I've done some work on that building years ago. Uh, but if you bring all that up to, to speak, you know how many 7,500s it would take to get to 5,400? I'm missing some math. I wasn't the best in class, but I, I, don't, I still don't understand. We're not paying no rent. We, we're going to pay $7,500 a year up to a year. What about the 54,000 that we're not paying? Okay, I'll, I'll yield to you. Yeah. Through the 54,000 that we're paying right now includes rent and utilities. Okay, so when we go into this building, it's 14,000 square feet. It's much bigger than what we're doing now. They've estimated between what we're going to pay in utilities and insurances and insurance. is going to be close to fifty thousand dollars. So that's going to be that's the where the fifty-four thousand is. 000. So I'm simply trying to limit our exposure on maintenance to where we're not going over the fifty-four. Because what we're going to be out of pocket already when we pay utilities and insurance is close to where we're budgeted already. But we are requ now. What, what condition is is Hansel Street in? I mean. It, <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. Mean, <laughs> yes. So, you know, I'm, Hans I'm Hansel Street is not working. There's no if ands, and buts about that's it. What I, Hansel that's Street what I was is going. not working. So, I mean, if if Santa Claus is at the door and he's willing to give us this gift, and it doesn't cost, and we and he's telling us to put a cap. I, I haven't seen anything Craig has I said. Don't, I, I agree. I don't understand why the discussion is still going. If he says I don't oppose her motion. Then why are we still debating it? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is Mr. Gashasana. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, again, uh, last comment, I guess, and we'll move to the substitution. But, Mr. Chairman, I, I am so glad to see that we're talking uh, some type of uh, spending here, or at least conservative spending. We, we just approved $1.2 million in expenses in, in the bottomless pit down 182 and yet we have an opportunity to have a building free of rent that someone's come to offer here and and to me it just you know it seems like when we have these these items that shouldn't or at least agenda that's very short that shouldn't take much discussion we find a way to get us an hour an hour and a half discussion on the no-brainer but again I, I respect each of my colleagues concerns and, and Natalie you, you do have valid concerns I, I, I don't disagree the issue that I have is we have a one-year agreement, a one-year agreement. If we don't like it, we can walk away, okay? I mean, it's it's just, I, I don't know. I'm like you, Brian. I understand. I understand he agrees with the motion. I do, but I wish that we would take this time in consideration on every dollar we spend in the parish, not when it just comes to certain ones that we want to pick apart. I mean, keep in mind, we spent 30-plus thousand tearing down a building for a parking lot. So <laughs> here we are. I mean, we, we have an opportunity. I'm just I'm just saying. But uh, Mr. Brown, I, I'm not sure where that came from. But I, I'm with you, uh, Mr. Romero. Again, I, I just want to say that for the record, the sheriff's department's on. And I, I, if the new sheriff comes and he doesn't want it, I'll be glad. And I hope he's here just like the other sheriff it, or she. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, next up, Mr. Trahal again. Call for the question. <clears throat> Let's go. Stop. <laughs> Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think what it is, it's going to be 
<coughs> the last uh, copper cooperative endeavor agreement, but we will insert the cap of 7,500 onto the maintenance program. Was 7,500 uh, annually or 1,000 <coughs> per incident? <coughs> as recommended by our legal and that would be an amendment to the last proposed cooperative endeavor agreement drafted by our attorney okay so we have a, <clears throat> a motion we just read from Ms. Broussard and we have a second by Mr. Brown roll call for the substitution for the substitution okay that motion passes thank, thank god <laughs> I'm gonna come back soon. <laughs> Thank y'all. Look forward to working with y'all. Right. Thank you, Craig. Okay, ordinance introduced for public hearing and adoption. There is none. Resolutions introduced for public hearing and adoption uh, to be voted tonight. Summary number 21 introduced by the Clerk of the Council, a resolution appointing one member to the Iberia Parish Airport Authority for the remainder of a five year term. <laughs> to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of Mr. Carl Vinson, whose term expires October 28, 2020. Appointment applications received from A. Corey Fruge, B. Michael Lamprez, C. Joseph Olivier. Just a reminder, Mr. Corey Fruge will not be in the voting. Just a quick reminder to everybody, Mr. Ricky Gonsalin is not here, so it will be 13 votes, but uh, we still need to get to the eighth vote to, to pass and adopt. <laughs> District number one, Mr. Olivier. District two, Mr. Olivier. District three, Mr. Lamprez. District four, Mr. Olivier. District five, Mr. Lamprez. District six, Mr. Lamprez. District seven, Mr. Lamprez. District nine, Mr. Lamprez. District 10, Mr. Olivier. District 11, Mr. Lamprez. District 12, Mr. Olivier. District 13, Mr. Lamprez. District 14, Mr. Lamprez. Okay, the results are Mr. Lamprez with eight votes and Mr. Olivier with five votes. So, Mr. Lamprez, congratulations. <laughs> uh, you'll be appointed to the airport authority. Thank you. You're welcome. I look forward to it. Okay, summary number 22 introduced by the clerk of the council, a resolution appointing Ms. Nara Crowley to the Twin Parish Port Commission, representing Iberia Parish for the remainder of a five-year term to fill the vacancy created by the resignation of Mr. Wayne Bell, whose term expires October 14, 2019. At this time, I was gonna see if Mr. <coughs> Nera Crowley, if she could come up to the podium and say a few words, introduce yourself. Thank you very much for having me. I have a bad cold, so I I ask you for forgiveness if I can't if I lose my voice periodically. Um, I've been a, a parish resident for 17 years, <clears throat> and uh, some of you may know me from Save Lake Panur. Um, I worked for many years, 10 years, uh, as uh, president of the uh, Save Lake Panur group. We spent a lot of time at um, legislation here at the council, and. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about my history. Um, we moved here on a five-year plan, according to my husband. And um, so that was actually 22 years ago because we commuted for four years. Loved it so much, and we're still here. So 22 years, we've been in Iberia Parish and um, have six children. We're a, um, a, uh, a family of, uh, we have 10 grandchildren. And like I said, most of my work, I have a degree, two degrees. I'm a 
bachelor's and a master's degree, uh, taught Italian at LSU for about, uh, I guess about eight years while I was doing Save Lake Panur. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm trying to think of everything. It's been a very busy life for the past 17 years. And um, most of my time was really devoted at um, Lake Panur up to about four years ago. And uh, four years ago, I <laughs> fell out of my attic. And um, so I had some problems after that. So now I'm back in the ball game. And um, I'm looking forward to, I hope you'll approve me as um, a board member for the commission for the Twin Port. Um, I've met with them and we've had uh, an orientation and spent many time together. I thank Marty and Larry for supporting me in this endeavor. And uh, <clears throat> my whole goal is to help our parish, our water, and our families, and our community. So um, that's about all I can have a voice left for. Mm -hmm. So uh, I hope if you have any questions, please ask. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. OK, I have a motion by Mr. Trahan. Oh, Mr. Richard. I've been working with Ms. Crowley for, I'm sure, 15, 18 years when I was the parish councilman uh, in her district. Um, she's very, very aggressive and very sharp, and I think she's gonna do an extremely good job uh, with the Twin Parish Port, and I commend you for putting your name in there because uh, we certainly can use your help and your experiences. Thank you. Okay, at this time I have a motion by Marty Traha. I have a second by Michael Landry, roll call. Okay, that motion passes. Ms. Nora, thank you for your time and welcome to the Twin Parish Port Commission. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay, moving on, summary number 23, introduced by Francis Tommy Pollard, a resolution amending the 2019 Public Building Maintenance Fund Budget in the total amount of $71,314 to provide for additional state funding through facility planning and control in the amount of 53,214 and additional local matching funds in the amount of 18,100 to be used for the Robert B. Green Veterans Memorial Building renovation upgrade and expansion project, all to be funded from the fund balance previous year's line item. We have a motion by Mr. Pollard, a second by Michael Landry. Mr. Pollard. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just asking for, we'd like to see that we can support this uh, difference of 18,100 so we can go forward with this building. It's just been lagging on, just a slow process, and now we finally starting to move on by getting someone that would, uh, some plans that the state would approve. So it was just a little bit different, and I'm just asking for my colleagues to support this. Okay. Uh, Michael Landry. I wave. You wave? Okay. No further. <laughs> um, Discussion, roll call. A motion passes. Okay, summary number 24, introduced by the Hospital <coughs> Service District number one, a resolution acknowledging receipt of and accepting the Hospital Service District number one's audit for fiscal year 2017 to 2018 for the year ending September 30th, 2018. All is recommended by the Iberia Parish Hospital Service District Number one, Board of Commissioners. Have a motion by Mr. Brown, a second by Ms. Broussard. <coughs> Mr. Brown. Wait. Ms. Broussard. Wait. No further discussion. Roll call. Okay, that motion passes. <coughs> Summary number 25, introduced by the Sewage District number one, a resolution amending the 2019 Sewer District number one fund budget in the amount of 50,000 to provide for the creation of a new personnel position titled assistant director for said department and <coughs> funding for partial year salary and related benefits all to be funded from the fund balance previous year's line item contingent mm -hmm. upon the completion of the Archer study grading. I need a motion. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard and a second by Mr. Olivier. Ms. Broussard. Wave. Mr. Olivier. Completed on this for the grading? 
Uh, if anybody can answer that question. Yes, sir. There you go. Yeah. It, has the Archer yeah. study been completed on this grading of this position? Oh, thank you. Uh, Does it fit the salary did, recommendation? We did request it about two weeks ago. I spoke with them today. They are working on it, and they said that they would have it by the beginning of next week. They would have the uh, draft have the it. job description and the pay grade scale. I, I would move the table list until we get that information from the Archer study. Okay, before I take your motion, I have okay. Mr. Napier. Um, that uh, was Mr. Napier. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to support you on that because I've got several calls on, the, on on this issue, which I was surprised at. And we talked about it in committee. And, you know, it, it gave us all time, at least it gave me time to think about it and talk to, you know, some people out there are. Or, or, or wondering why, you know, let me see how I could put this. It was said to me that when, when it went up on the flow rates, and I, and I know Casey came and talked to us about all that, uh, but that this, this the sewer district was going to look at how this flow rate increase, you know, brought them from the red into the black, and that, you know, at when it got to that point, that they would look at if there was a chance to adjust, the adjust those rates. Thank you. And uh, they said, and I've got several calls on this, and they said n nothing has been said. I don't even know if they're at that point. But now they're asking for an assistant for the director. Now, I'm sure if I ask Mr. Reshard, there has been a lot of agencies within Iberia Parish government that is working understaffed. Mr. Reshaw, right? Oh, totally correct. Yeah. So, you know, to, I'm just apprehensive about, about doing this. You know, with that being said, um, is it dire that she get a, a, an assistant now? You know, I'm, I'm just asking y'all to, you know, and I know we talked about it, but those, those are my concerns, and I don't think that I can um, support this right now at this time without some further uh, discussion and, and input. And I would have liked to have seen her here, uh, Miss Anita here. I don't know, was she asked to come or? Uh, I never did. No, I, I mean, you yeah. know, so um, I, I just, I'm, I'm with Eugene about tabling it and looking into it and getting some more discussion. It's, it's only all, all we got was from Casey. So I mean, a lot of a lot of parish government is working understaffed. I'm sure Herman is, and um, I, I'm not. I don't think I can support it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Dugal. Oh uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think one of the concerns I heard was that the existing director is uh, contemplating retirement, and then. A year or two, she may want to retire, and that we need to figure out. To, but keep in mind that the, the retirement structure of the parish is that when she retires, we're still going to pay her, even though she's gone. So we're going to pay somebody else. We're going to be paying two people to do the same job. I, 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 my, I don't know. I would prefer to see a contract person in there right now until we know definitely how far we're going, instead of hiring somebody at this point and now they're on the retirement too. They're part of a system that we can't hardly pay for right now. So uh, I, I know they have a lot of contract employees now. I don't know why one more is not gonna, uh, it's not gonna uh, hurt the system that much. And so um, I'm having real trouble with this. Thank you. Okay. Um, what I do, do want to remind all of y'all is that the, um, the uh, attorney that they were using was budgeted for 50,000 and they've just switched over to the DA's office. So you do have the 50,000. It's not like you're going into it. Um, the director is pretty much stays and works uh, in the office. The other girl, uh, the other lady is, um, you know, like the receptionist and does some of the, um, the, the, the other phone calls and things like that. If you don't have that one individual that when you get a phone call that I got sewage in my bathtub and stuff like that, before you start sending like Barry and them out there to look at it, you're taking them out of a big job, it would be this individual who would uh, go out and uh, look at it and decide, well, you know, do we send Barry? Do we send, you know, just 
they have one or two workers still for the sewer department and stuff like that. He'd kind of be the go-between guy. You know, not always do you want to send your contractor to go to somebody's house to talk about things like that. They have different feelings from being with the sewer department to just being a contractor. You know, this is what has to happen. Um, there was some discussion instead of maybe calling it a position of uh, assistant director, maybe they could have, you know, used a different word you know, a supervisor or something like that. Um, so I, since we didn't get the orchard study back, I, I would, you know, go with the table. I do believe in this position here, um, you know, out there with them. It, it, it won't be costing the, the, the people in the, um, in, the, in the unit, you know, any more, any more money. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you, that system was in such dire needs that um, to, to immediately come around and just start dropping the rates until everything is uh, finished. I, I don't think we want to get anywhere near that, but uh, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and support you too, Gene, until we get the numbers back from it. Okay, next up we have Tommy Landry. Yeah, uh, the, the term assistant director kind of worries me. Maybe we could reword that to like maybe field supervisor, or main, field maintenance supervisor or something because, uh, you know, is this person going to move up into that director's job? Is that the intent? Does that person have the qualifications to be able to do what the director's position is? So I think the name is kind of might be throwing some people off. I don't know if anybody feels that way about it, but uh, maybe change the wording and it might be something to consider. I would agree with that. I'm going to get with Ms. Donna after, and maybe she could send some recommendations yeah. to them to um, to look at it. But uh, uh, any other comments? Okay, I'm going to go back to Miss Eugene Olivier has a um, has a motion to table on the floor, a second by Mr. Brian Napier to the uh, first meeting next month. Okay, we can do that. So it'll be the uh, first meeting, Wednesday meeting uh, in. In March. Um, Donna, uh, we, we, we thinking about uh, possibly opening it up to a better definition of what the person would be. Um, do you think you could have, besides the one that we asked for assistant director for another definition to be here, would you like to do it the last meeting in March? Yeah, let's let's tweak it. I'll, okay, um, I'll call you d tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I'll call you tomorrow morning, Miss Donna. Um, okay. So we have a table to. Um, you want to go to second week, a uh, second meeting in March? Whatever time she needs. Uh. first meeting uh, okay so we have a table till this first week in March any second, other discussion second, meeting. second week first meeting okay second any meeting. second meeting in March yeah. she, can, she can have it for the first meeting that's, okay. <laughs> that's what he said yeah. he said he's uh, Eugene which yeah, way, which way changing his mind. the first meeting in March that's the next meeting. it's the 13th That'll give you enough time. Okay. Go to the second okay. meeting. So we have a table for the second meeting in March. And we have a second by Mr. Napier. Roll call. <laughs> okay. That mo the table passes on that. Okay, summary number 26, introduced by the parish president, a resolution author authorizing the renewal of group health insurance benefits with Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Louisiana, a 5% decrease, <laughs> dental benefits with Gordon, Guardian, no change, and life insurance benefits with Dearborn Life, no change, and each for the period beginning on April 1st, 2019 through March 31st, 2020. <coughs> I have a motion by Michael Landry, a second by Mr. Brown. Michael Landry. I waive uh, unless Larry has anything. No. Mr. Brown? 
Okay, no further discussion. Roll call. Okay, that motion passes. Summary number 27, introduced by the parish president, a resolution authorizing in the awarding of said contracts for property and liability insurances with variance agency, all is recommended by the parish administration. I have a motion by Mr. Brown, a second by Michael Landry. Mr. Brown? Leave. Michael Landry. Leave. No further discussion, roll call. Okay, that motion passes. At this time, we're gonna ask for a vote to go into uh, executive session. Um, to discuss the two items. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Michael Landry. Roll call. T Tommy, Eugene. Eugene. Yeah, we can. Uh, Pollitt. Pollitt. Brian, just push it through. Gotta get to that all that shit. Back in regular session. Now I need a motion. Um, I, I, wait, hold a summary. Yep. Quick, quickly, yep. uh, I, I'd like the record reflect that uh, we went into executive session to discuss both matters. Uh, a was for information only. That's already been uh, addressed with uh, hiring a special counsel. Uh, with respect to B, it is the recommendation of your third party administrator, your insurer, as well as our office, that uh, the council engage uh, Catherine Landry of the Price Firm uh, on the rates that she's been charging previously to uh, defend the interests of our beer Paris government in that particular litigation. Okay. So we're back in regular session now. So summary number 28, introduced by legal counsel, resolution authorizing employment of special counsel for litigation entitled Deborah Darby versus Iberia Parish Government, civil case number 133671F on the docket of the 16th Judicial District Court, Iberia Parish, Louisiana, all in accordance with section 9-01 special counsel and 9-02 legal counsel of the Iberia Parish Home Rule Charter and for their amending the 2019 risk management fund balance in the amount of 10,000 to provide funding for said council and all to be funded from the fund balance previous year's line item. I have a motion by Mr. Napier, a second by Michael Landry. Mr. Napier. Um, I'm wave, well, I'm, Andy uh, said. Just say wave. Wave. Michael Landry. Ms. Broussard. I'm waiting. I waiting. offer substitute motion that we um, appoint Catherine Landry as the special counsel. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a substitute motion, and I have, okay, and I have a second by Mr. Olivier. So now we're voting on a substitute motion to uh, add, add Ms. Landry. Roll call. Tommy. Okay, that motion passes, and uh, now we need a roll call for adjourn. We may be